which is on. <laughs> Oh, that was intense. Um, she's, <laughs> good. She registrano. Um, ci sono lì, insomma, i tre, quindi ci sono tantissime persone certo, che, sì, che vogliono assaggiare. Sì, puoi assaggiare con quella bottiglietta. Sì, lui uh, ci registra mm -hmm. e così le persone guardano quando vogliono loro okay. e assaggiano quando vogliono loro. Ok. I'll get him to sign a waiver later. Ok, all right. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll sign whatever intellectual property rights or anything, any, uh, any, anything you want for... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock here, and, and, and we're and we're old, so nine intellectual property rights is not going to be an issue. <laughs> 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 <You know. laughs> allora, lui ha detto che puoi cominciare. Quindi, okay. so you guys have um, Barat twenty. Is that correct? Or nineteen? Nineteen. LBA. Nineteen. It's just okay. Yeah. Okay. Io parlerei delle che. Tenere chiaro che loro hanno 19. Um, Provi in inglese, poi se devo tradurre. Lo ok, I try to speak in English, but my English is not English. And uh, you know, the story Barat is a, pro is a program to Hannah Schneider, the, the woman who worked to Torino University for the research, the old variety lost in Piedmont. And uh, this variety born in Susa Valley, up Torino, between Torino and the mountain. In France. In France, it. yes. And uh, when I test in the little proof, I think, uh, like me, but for, especially for the level acidity. And uh, uh, I, uh, I planted in, now I have uh, almost reactor. 2 hectare and 18 and 800 uh, meter and 8000 meter not 800 8000 and uh, uh, the first uh, vintage is uh, 17 and i planted the first part uh, in the prima annata è stata il 18 19 18 18 18 the first vintage and i planted the vineyard in 14 in 2014. Uh, the idea is, uh, for me, is result more the, the, the wine fermenting and aging in concrete. Uh, in 19, don't have a skin contact. In 20, uh, in 20 a little, little part of skin contact in the mass, uh, maybe 400 liter, just one week in skin, skin contact. But the idea is uh, esaltare, come si dice? To bring out. To bring out the, the, the salting, the mineral part, and, uh, and the level acidity. Uh, I like this style, this type of wine. And uh, for me, remember a little the the Chenin Blanc for the acid part or, or this wine and I, especially because here the land is very white is many chalky and uh, um, and the wine is more salting and and the idea is working the clean uh, pure uh, grape pure fruit and but put in the in the battle to the the territory the the soil uh, so for us really this is the first white wine that we've ever made um fabrizio said he was never going to make white wine he was a rosista um but then when he discovered this grape as he was saying he fell in love with it because of its the fact that it was really vertical and had a lot of minerality to it and it's mountain fruit right it's in valley Susa, which are the the mountains going up into france you know the alps there the yeah. piemontese alps and so it had kind of all the ingredients that he was looking for. It's resistant um, because it's a mountain, a mountain variety. And they did a lot of studies as well to see if it was related to any other varieties because um, they assumed because of where they had found it, they located it on this old farmer's, you know, one of those rogue vines and he had made a couple, a couple bottles. So they were sure it was just some sort of hybrid or some relative of something else. And it turns out it's not related to anything. It's its own, its own variety. Um, 
And for us, this being the 2020 that we're drinking, you guys are drinking the 19, it's only the, you know, the third, no, the first vintage was 18, 18, 18. so yes. the third time we've made it. And so we're learning kind of what this variety wants to do because there's no real history to it. There was just these handful of farmers that were using this variety in the Val di Souza, and they were just direct press and bottle and drinking. Um, but what we've seen so far is that we really like, it's, it's a wine that we think wants some age on it. And that's when it really starts, um, coming into its own. Like it's, it's not an out, out of the gate wine. It also seems to do really well with a little bit of the skin contact. So the friends of ours, I don't know if you're familiar with the winery Cray Alto in, um, Okay, they're a natural wine winer, winery near us, and they, um, with the children at the school that we have, we have a Steiner school here. Um, they made a, a Baratu Chat macerated wine. 100% of it was macerated for four days, I think. No, no, per uh, 30 giorni. Oh, 30 days. Wow, sorry, 30 days, and um, it was just made for the school by the children. But we tasted it, and it's absolutely stunning. We were all blown away by the the quality and just how well this this wine takes to maceration which not all even though it's very much la moda not all white wines can be macerated but um it seemed that it seems that this variety um yes. has a whole nother whole nother personality to it um with some skin contact yeah and uh for me is it's important to understand exactly in the case the maceration wine where is the time because uh, the skin for the barato chat is very big thick Come thick, thick. Same the the grape uh, for for it uh, over the table and uh, table, table grapes. Yes, and I know I like when for me for 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 make a skin contact wine is important to understand exactly the time because I in many cases for me lost the variety and. Uh, and this is the idea. Just uh, one, I make this wine with one little part, the skin contact for more uh, corpo body. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I prefer look to more to the elegance. I don't know elegance. Uh, uh, and, uh, and easy for drink. Now I understand because it's just 19 is the second vintage and I understand maybe it's better wait a little more in concrete before battling because uh, now 19 is for me is beautiful wine, but uh, uh, I normally I battling in the spring and in reality I think it's better uh, uh, spend the summer in the concrete for more evolution the wine because the smell too is a uh, is a little part remember a little uh, sauvignon a little riesling and uh, and this is more an aroma uh, enjoy <laughs> <laughs> any any questions just shout i think can you can you comment again real briefly on the history of the grape um i i think i missed that at the beginning if you if you slightly mentioned it but um I, i'm just kind of curious as to where where precisely this because i've never had it before so um, the, 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 the story of uva. The story in reality, uh, many per many persons. Si, si, Susa Valle is uh, between Torino and the Frejus in direction France. Is a little part, uh, a little valley, and this area uh, is when he had the, this grape but uh, is almost lost uh, is a is a plant uh, in the wall of the house because uh, the skin is bigger and sometimes don't make wine but uh, aging in the in the, solaio, in the down the roof for it all the time because it's very big the skin and uh, it's more easy for uh, 
Tipo vette o... No, no, tipo che la mangiavi come frutta, la lasciavi lì, rimaneva sana perché la buccia molto spesso. Devono essere posti un po' arieggiati. Eh. So that it was basically discovered in this house in Val di Susa, which is the bordering mountain region of France and, and Piedmont, right? So it's the valley that goes up into, outside of Torino and up into France. And um, this farmer had this grape and because the skins are so thick, just like table grapes, Um, they would eat, they were eating them. They would make wine from them, but they could also double down as just grapes that they would just leave hanging there and just kind of eat them as, as fruit for the family. Um, and the wife, the wife uh, and this man don't like more this plant near the house. And, always the wives. But before cut the plant, uh, this man take different part of wood and uh, make a little, little vineyard. And for lucky, I testing one this uh, bottle because after this, this man is dead and uh, the vineyard by another person, but make wine with a big winery, with, uh, least uh, sulfite is, is, I know, I know for me is the wine you testing banana, ananas is almost the same smell for many different uh, grape and uh, lost the, the character of grape. And, and when I testing, I think, okay, I wait many years for make a good... Come hai fatto Anna Schneider a trovare quella proprio? Perché ha portato il legno. Because when you, the, ah, the, okay. the research is from CNR, yeah, the CNR. genetic research. And when you see the strange plant, make the wood uh, and the grape in the... In, in CNR, centro di ricerca, centro basically the, di ricerca. the nursery or the, the, where this man brought these cuttings to be grafted after his wife told him he had to take down this ugly vine off the house in order to, this old farmer in order to save and make a little vineyard from this these grapes that he loved so much he brought them to this nursery where there was this scientist Anna Schneider who works for the University of Torino was working and she saw this strange variety and that's how she got her hands on a, a few bottles of his of his wine that he had made as well as was able to then take the information and, and do the studying on this grape. And since this man sadly has passed away and what he was saying is this small vineyard that this man had was bought by somebody else. And now that vineyard sadly just gets blended into some big co-op, um, some mass produced wine. But luckily um, they've kept some of those um, grafted vines and now they're, you can buy Barato chat. So Fabrizio is one of Quante persone fanno barato adesso? I don't know exactly, but uh, qua siamo in, in Monferrato. After me is other uh, one, two, three, four or five little producer. But in total, I think it's around 10, 12 hectares between Monferrato and Susa Valley. So there's, there's only around 10 to 12 hectares total of this variety planted. We're, we're one of a handful, four or five producers here in total. We're probably... 10 producers that make this this wine and uh, it's fun because i am the more big producer in this in the world fabrizio Just is officially the largest uh, producer of barato chat in the world which is an yeah. exciting thing to be able to say <laughs> with two hectares total <laughs> but the uh, uh the, the the barato chat uh association should give you uh you should get an award or something from the the the, the consortium of, of <laughs> <laughs> of which he's also president. <laughs> and then, I think it's very good with cheese or, or, or shellfish. See, shellfish, the, the fat fish, uh, because clean the mount. And, and the idea is make not to mature, but not too much mature, because I prefer uh, when the alcohol is, the level of alcohol is low and uh, not too much. Uh, i, I like make wine, but I like drink. And, uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is the idea. <laughs> so you were saying you were saying that the soil here is very white. It's very is is it is it chalky or limestone? Yes, it's a blend, but the chalky is is many chalky. The 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 position is bit sometimes is between fifteen and eighteen. The active chalky is very very white. But this is, is a line, is a different line in the hill because uh, all this hill uh, formed uh, because this before is a sea, million 
Quante ore fa, million years ago, uh, is a C and return is not the same line, but in this part, different village uh, is, is very wide. Yeah. And for lucky, for me, I prefer because it's more. Before the right. sea retreated, actually, Monferrato and Asti are the oldest. Were the Monferrato and Elange sono i più vecchi. Elange, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and, and Asti is younger. Elange and Monferrato were the oldest, and Asti was younger. And as the sea retreated, then Asti kind of was was the second to come pop pop out. That is really I, cool. I had no idea about the background of the grid. It is, and then tasting it, it is, it is very similar to Chenin Blanc. Like it has, it has great acidity and minerality, and it has this tropical fruit. But then there's also this, this like rich, lush quality to it, along with it, that offsets the acidity, and it has a little bit of a spiciness to it. This we're so we're drinking the twenty. But there's like this kind of touch of a creamy mid palate, which is kind of what we're. I, I think a little bit is is the delicate, the little bit of skin touch, but a little uh, also just the variety itself. And as as the wine ages, that part kind of comes out a little bit more. So the wine gets a little bit more harmonious. Um, how, acidity how, how much how much skin contact does the twenty the twenty twenty have? 2020 hai fatto pochissimo, ma un po' l'hai fatto. 2020 ho fatto sulla massa totale che mi... I think is a 7,000, around 7,000 liter of wine, around 10,000 bottle. Uh, the part uh, is for between 400 and 500 liter of skin contact for one week. Okay. But I blended with the, all the mass. He has, yeah, the one cement tank that's 450 yeah. or 500 liters that he'll keep separated yes. and then and with the skin just, contact uh, and then he blends it into the mess. Many small uh, old uh, concrete tank because I don't like uh, the side the temperature. Normally the white fermenting in very low temperature, 18 or 22, I don't know. The, the, the person make wine decide, but when you decide uh, the temperature for fermenting, in the same time you decide to the aromatic profile in this wine because uh, different temperature is different uh, part of aroma. And, uh, and I prefer don't control the temperature, but the solution is just uh, fermenting in very small mass because the volume is small and the temperature don't go up. When the, the mass is more big and fermenting, the temperature go, uh, is more difficult. But I prefer uh, the vintage and, and the wine is expression for this, the vintage, uh, just this. Tipo mm. bene. buono. Grazie. Mm. Slarina. So yeah, so then another grape that I don't really know much about. Come on, I'm sorry, Ned. Uh, another sorry. grape I don't know much about. Yeah, I know. It's it's a perfect yes. segue. Yes. And and please, anybody, if you have questions, Fabrizio just said, yes. please just shout out. He's happy to answer. I actually. I uh, as you're pouring this and stuff, I'm curious, you know, so you have Barat or Baratucciat and then, and then Slarina. Um, and so uh, Baratucciat was something that you, that you discovered and planted. Um, yep. Have you always grown unusual grapes that other people didn't know about? Or is this you personally no. wanted to go in this direction and do, do your own thing and, and stuff? Hai sempre lavorato con uve che nessuno conosceva? È una cosa recente che hai deciso di andare no, in questa direzione? No, I... è una long story. Uh, I, I, I start work to Barbera uh, and after I have a passion to Pinot Noir and I, I planted the first vineyard I planted Pinot Noir and, uh, and after Nebbiolo and Grignolino uh, but... Um, Slarina is curious. I, I think in reality the, the, uh, 
unique, very privileges for the small producer is make, is make wine like the producer. Uh, first, I make wine for drink. And, uh, and when I, I go for the testing organized to university, the many different grapes, but, and finally it's important, uh, the, the wine like me, because uh, it's difficult to make wine when you don't like the variety, you don't like the, uh, the type of wine. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so maybe the, the grapes that Fabrizio always worked with were the ones that he was born into, because um, our boys were born here and they were their fifth generation newlies in this town. I'm the oddball. Um, <laughs> So he was born into specific varieties that were varieties that are indigenous to this region, Barbera, Nebbiolo, Grignolino. Um, Pinot Noir was his first little kind of redheaded stepchild move. Um, and then Slarina and Barat are two varieties that he happened upon that he just fell in love with. Otherwise, I would say he wasn't looking um, to add two odd varieties that nobody had ever heard of before. Um, they kind of found him rather than him finding them, if that makes sense. In fact, he kind of complains that now he has too many too many labels. <laughs> he needs to simplify uh, a bit, no? Ti lamenti che adesso hai troppe etichette. No, non è che ho troppe etichette, but uh, in, the, in the months, months enough, uh, the harvest time is nine or 10 wine is, is not just for the work, the physically work, because the quantity is the quantity, but uh, you think for every type uh, and every vineyard in the same time, because sometimes it's more young, sometimes it's more old, uh, but uh, what is better for, for this year, for this grape, and when it's many, it's more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, in the same time it's fun. I think uh, make wine is very good wine, it's very good uh, job. But um, I don't know, uh, Barbera, Nebbiolo is, is beautiful, but uh, make wine, but at the same time when, I don't know, I think the more beautiful job when this old same job, and ti stanca un po', come si dice, è bello che ci siano delle novità per non essere stanco, per uh, To keep pensare. things new and fresh um, is... is yeah. Important. Yeah. And the Slarina, in reality, before, Slarina, is the, here is the name of the grape, but in Piedmont, he have four different names, Cenerina, Cellerina, and Balsamina, depend the area, Monferrato, or Asti, or Tortona, but it's in all Piedmont. Just in the 60, 70, uh, is lost because the, the plant, the production is low, and normally the, the grape is uh, big, but the skin is deep, is uh, small, and the, the spargolo, come si dice spargolo. The Sono bunch. grandi, ma con pochi, con pochi chicchi. So the, the bunches are really big, but there's few berries on them. So yeah. it's got about a third of a less yield than Barbera, let's say, um, which is pretty significant. Um, ma normally- Did you guys get that other part about it has four names in Piedmont? Yes. So in each, yeah, in each because of the dialect. So in each region, yeah. and one of the little il detto è che la l'uva slarina non riempie latina. La uva slarina non riempie la latina. Latina, il tino, non la latina. La latina. Sì, latina. 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 Okay. <laughs> the the slarina grape doesn't fill up the tino or the tina, which is the you know. Yes. The botte. Because the skin is small. And uh, normally for the other grape, Nebbiolo, Barbera, uh, the, the, when you transform the grape in juice for 100 kilo, you make uh, 70 liter of wine. Almost is a little more low, one bottle for kilo. But, uh, and after depend, the, the vintage is more dry and uh, is more low and the vintage is rain is a little more, but it's around 17%. And 
and the slarina is around 60 percent and this is the reason because uh, it was abandoned yes. in the 60s especially in this time for the farmer the good vintage is when you make a good make many wine for drink for sale is a is alimentary part for the people not uh, to when it's good is better obviously but um, was part of the their, story their, calor their caloric in intake every day it was an important part of their yeah uh, their diet and and in reality for me the the zarina too i i i drink many french wine because i like uh, the style the especially the part not too famous now it's famous but years ago it's not too famous and uh, and, and for me, this too, remember a little Gamay, a little Pinot de Nice is not exactly, but in, it's in this area. And, uh, and I like, uh, and I planted because like me, uh, this is the reason. And, and, and it's fun in the same time, it's fun, make a red wine, uh, just 11, I don't know, 12, I don't know degrees, 11, 12, but low not too big just for the summer for easy is a friendly wine finally uh. yeah we were kind of calling it the plusard of monferrato for a while it just felt like that kind of really light aromatic gorgeous low alcohol um red that you can easily drink a bottle of by yourself which is what we like <laughs> but, and and, uh, and the, for return of the what do you told me before uh, in reality the unique grape uh, not Piemont is for me is the Pinot Noir but Pinot Noir is Pinot Noir uh, the other variety I, I prefer work to Piemont is variety especially because uh, I think when the person make wine and live in Piemont is lucky Living Barolo is more lucky in Monferrato, but in Monferrato too is very lucky because the Piemont is is very good land for make wine, uh, and and the idea is uh, work to indigenous variety and for an, uh, it's more connection. I don't know. It's more it's more the idea to Piedmont and and uh, così. What do you guys think? Well, I, I love Pinot Donis and I love Touraine, you know, Gamay. And yeah. I also really love um, Chilean Pais. And this yeah. is very, yeah. like, there's like yeah. exactly like you were saying, this is in that zone. It has a lot of yeah. commonality, common flavors and tastes. It's similar to them. Um, and, and I like, and it's also, it's kind of similar to, to Grignolino and, and Ruque. I like, you know, I like those like lighter body, but like cool sort of spicy, interesting. It's, also, it's the nice, the nice thing about, again, other than Pinot Noir, which is again, it's kind of, I used the term earlier, but the redheaded stepchild of our estate, but all of the, the red varieties that we have, while they're all wildly different in, in their design, they can tell that they're all relatives. Um, some are more distant cousins than others, but there is that common kind of filo uh, that runs through them. And I and I agree. There's a lot of and it's also obviously we know small producer has to do with Fabrizio, our terroir, the cellar, you know, all of those different things. But the the Grignolino, the Grignolino and the Salina are definitely, you know, relatives, and and you can feel that. And that's the nice thing about only working with Piemontese varieties. And then, uh, you know, all of our fruit is on our, it's all estate fruit. We don't have, you know, vineyards around. We have more or less one valley where all our vineyards are planted in and around. Um, and then we have a, one older vineyard, which we'll get to when we do Baraba, which is a little bit further away. But other than that, they're all here in this kind of protected valley, which is, it makes work really easy, but it also, it makes tasting these wines by side by side, I think really interesting as well, because you're, you're getting a similar terroir. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I feel like that 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 really comes through in the wines. Like even even if Barbera and Pinot Noir and Baratucciat are all very different grape varieties, tasting tasting them together, there you can you do. 
I feel like I do taste that they are coming from uh, the same place, like and and made by the same person. That there's the uh, you know a common philosophy behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know the 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 part uh, for me is interesting in this wine is uh, because it's easy for drink. It's very easy for drink, but in same time finish just a little part tannic part and this in the same wine the same wine is easy for drink but uh, um, is good for food because clean the amount is is many different uh, solution and this is fun is is amazing because uh, you drink one bottle and talk just drink one bottle but at the same time you eat with this, this wine this for me is the piedmont the character of piedmont the the little part of tannin and yeah the dip they're different I tannins like than the nebbiolo and the granulina where they hit kind of on the top of your tongue but there's definitely a nice little tannin texture there that makes it a little bit more unique than some of the other varieties we were mentioning before maybe two that don't have that touch of tannin and at the end like the salarina does um the the next wine so i i, I decided when i was putting the little sample packs together i had the baraba before the rosore because the rosore has a little bit more tannin and a little bit more alcohol and stuff to it but we can we can go in either whichever one you want to do first um but i did also want to ask because you were sort of just talking about uh, how it's lucky to live in Piedmont as a winemaker, and it's lucky to make wine in Monferrato, but it's even luckier to make wine in Barolo. Um, I am really curious about both of you, your perspectives on how Monferrato is different from the Longue, because so much of the, the you know, the Longue, at, le at least here for the wines that we get in Maine from Piedmont, the Longue just dominates people's understanding of what Piedmont is, you know, like 80% probably of the Piedmontese wines that we get here are all, you know, like Longue, Roero, you know, Nebbiolo de Longue. It's, it's, it's that part of Piedmont and we don't get a whole lot of wines from Monferrato. And I'm curious how, you know, how it feels, how different it is, how the, the culture and the winemaking, the, the feel, everything is in, Qual è la domanda esatta di qual è la cultura del Monferrato? Sì, 80% dei vini che... I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that even 20% gets allocated to other parts of Piedmont. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just in, in, in my mind. But. <laughs> when I was a million, no, but, millions of moons ago, when I was a wine but, director on Long Island, uh, there was, there was I think, zero, zero that weren't Piedmont that came. Again, I was in Long Island. I wasn't in New York City, so I got the kind of... The second, the second, second dibs, but there was there was nothing other than Lange. But lui vuole sapere la differenza per te, cioè mm. di raccontare un po' perché loro 80% dei vini che, che arrivano lì sono, sono delle Lange. Lange. Io stavo dicendo già 20% è tanto. è tanto. Per la differenza, la cultura, il vino, è come di essere in Monferrato e non a Lange, perché le persone, la percezione delle persone di mm. Piemonte mm. è quasi sempre della Lange. Lange. Sì. sì, ma uh, del Lange. For all the world, when you when you talk at Piemonte's wine, the first idea is uh, Barolo Barbaresco, the Lange area, and uh, and uh, is normal. Now I I prefer I don't know I don't know. For me, it, it's two different uh, part of the same story. The I think it's many better work to hectare in Barolo for the for the price of the wine, for the price of the land, uh, for many reasons. But for the wine, for me, um, for the area, here is many, many more wild and it's full of forest, especially for the weather change. The every year is a little more hot and uh, the forest preserve a little, tiene un po' più fresco. It helps that with this global, mm. global warming. Especially, if, for, for me, for the person make uh, good agriculture, organic or biodynamic, questo è Rossore, però lui forse vuole essere... Uh, um, Baraba, do you want us to do Baraba, Ned, since that's what people will be doing? Or? Well, really, whichever you prefer. 
Ah. Facciamo rosore. We, we usually do rosore first. Okay. If, All right. If, yeah, well, let's do rosore then. That's fine. And um, so just, and, just to be clear for everybody out there, so we're going to bottle number four. If you're if you are at home now opening bottles, okay. rosore. And because I stavo dicendo, and, and it's full of uh, biodiversity because it's a forest, uh, grain, food for cow. I don't know. Come si chiama il fieno? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, uh, mixed all the season is a flower. I, I, I think uh, when it's just all vineyard, uh, I don't know. I don't like and uh, I think it's important the biodiversity, the natural biodiversity. Uh, it's more difficult because uh, for the wild boar, for the deer, is many different uh, problem for the forest. But in the same times, when when make the forest for the grape, I think is many more good part and the bad part. Uh, when the, the the grape maturing not just in the sun, the morning, in the night, but as a part of the tree, un po' di ombra, is, shadow, is, is shade, shade, shade yeah. I, I think is better, is more balanced. Uh, Quanto costa un ettaro in Barolo, lo sai? Dipende dal cru. No, the, the, I don't know. For example, here the price of land, uh, uh, you pay one ectare around, depend the position, but around 10,000 euro. Uh, Planted. No, 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 planted. Un, oh, planted. un hectare okay. di terra. Okay. And one hectare of land in Barolo, depend the group, but it's one million, three million, uh, 500,000, two million, I don't know, depend the group. Uh, this is a big difference. And, but in the same time, uh, you decide when, when the land is all free, you decide uh, the position. Uh, respect the variety you like planted uh, is better east is better north is better south uh, is better in the top of the hill or a little down and i don't know it's different uh, it's more agriculture uh, traditional agriculture uh, we're kind of monferrato is um i like to think it's kind of the wild west of, of piemonte um like Fabrizio was saying, you can still buy land as a young family. You can still buy, you can buy a cascina. So like an entire huge farmhouse for 50,000 euros. You can buy a piece, a hectare of land for 10,000. Um, for 100,000 euros, you've got yourself a winery, a house, everything. And so for young families, it's a, it's one of the last kind of spots to, that people can afford to move to. So we're in one of the best winemaking regions, in my humble opinion, in the world, Piedmont's I think one of the top winemaking regions in the world. And yet you can still, in Monferrato, in this part of Piedmont, you can still, everybody, regardless of what your salary is, can afford to kind of set up set up shop here and, and homestead, if you will. Um, and as Fabrizio is saying, that the thing about here is there's still farmers, there's still mixed agriculture. It's not all vineyards. The Lange is just gorgeous from an aesthetic point of view because you go there and there's just these incredible blankets of vineyards and all the hills are every single square foot is covered with a vineyard. But if we talk about that, as you guys know, ecologically, um, environmentally, all of the things, it's, it's not ideal. Um, not having mixed agriculture, not having the trees there anymore, the erosion that's happening, um, there's no pure land anymore because there's very few authentic, authentic, but there are, they do exist. We have friends, but there's very, very few authentic, staunch, biodynamic, organic producers that can work because they're getting constant spray from their neighbors and, and run off from the water. So it's really also hard to kind of maybe experiment, live your dream and do your thing in, in Lange because you have your one little piece of a vineyard and that's all you've got because you can't afford to get anything else maybe in and so there's not a lot of room for error either because, you know, Barolo and Barbaresco are so traditionally rich and important. Um, whereas here you can still play around, um, experiment. And in terms of like a cost of living, it's completely different. And also the thing that I like is not being from here. As an American, you have this idea of Italy and you, and, you know, I came here for the first time in 1998, 1998. 
and it was still pretty authentic, but I've seen it from 98 until now. It's like, there's very few areas in Italy that it's not sadly been somewhat kind of ruined by tourism and Monferrato is not, you know, we get tourists from Europe, but we don't get a huge wine tourism here. That's kind of, you know, changed the landscape literally and figuratively. So that's also nice to be able to eat in authentic restaurants where there's still mom and pop cooking and the shops are still locally owned. And, you know, there's, you come here and, the, and you know, I've, I was the only American here for years and years and years and years and years. So, it, you know, it was, that's, un, that's very odd now in, in Italy. So it's nice that there's this kind of authenticity to the region. And then the way the, the Nebbiolo, for example, from here drinks, if we talk about, the Nebbiolo from the north and the Nebbiolo from Lange, which is a little bit south, you have this kind of more balsamic Nebbiolo in the Lange, you have this little bit more ethereal, spicy Nebbiolo from the north. And then where we are geographically is also, I think, where our Nebbiolo falls. So it's it's interesting in the taste pro profile, it falls kind of just where it is geographically. It's got a little bit of that ethereal spicy bit, but it's also got a little bit more weight and girth than some of the, the northern Nebbiolos. Sì, è cambiato un po', è un po' diverso, but in the same times the in the wine world uh, the Piedmont I think is in the good position, but is in the good position for the Lange, for the Barolo Barbaresco because this is you know in the world uh, the Piedmont is wine. Uh, it's different, it's more farming, it's more uh, rural. Uh, rural, yeah. yes, it's more rural. Uh, and for lucky. Yeah. Everyone's still got a tractor here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everyone's everyone talks about their tra tractors, not their fancy cars. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but back to, I guess back to Rosora. Is that is that answer kind of okay or yeah that that yeah I was I was just curious. I because I've never I've never really talked to anybody from Monferrato before about Monferrato. Um and I and I imagined that. I, or I had a hard time imagining someone in like Barbaresco Asili ripping out their Nebbiolo to plant Baratucciata. I had a hard time imagining like that happening. <laughs> um, the, yeah. <laughs> the, all the, all the, all the pictures of your winery and of the valley, they, they look very different from any pictures I've ever seen, you know, of, of the long day be, be, because there's trees, basically. Yeah. There's, there's trees, there's forest. A little no. secret, Ned, is that the, well, the Alba truffles, mm -hmm. I mean, no more forests in Alba, there's no more trees. So here we have some of the best truffles that you're going to get. And you know, Fabrizio will probably say no. It's part to suffer in Monferrato. Yeah, but the the a lot of the white Alba truffles are actually from Monferrato. Uh, we know that for a fact, and you know because where where the you know we always joke you know where are the truffles coming from? There's right. from Monferrato. Yeah, uh, but uh, but come visit. I mean, you just have to come yes. and see it for yourself. And uh, I'm especially I am the unique farmer in this village, uh, and I don't have. Uh, nothing other person farming no vineyard no nothing and and when this is very important it's 35 hectare around the out around the house part of fieno come si dice hey part of hay part of vineyard part of forest part uh, but uh, when no especially re repeat when you make good agriculture this is very important yeah. Uh, and when you have a space Poly for, yeah. for the site, when planted this or planted this, or is better for this grape, for this, uh, uh, it's more easy in the same time. It's more farming, it's more rural, but it's more easy. Have you been to Ardesh, Ned? No, did you know, do you know kind of about that area in yeah. France? The, yeah. yeah. I, when I went there for the first time in 2010, maybe, it was just kind of getting started and I just, I was kind of blown away by this cool little community that was formed there of all these young winemakers from all over the place. They, most of them were, I think there was one winemaker from there and the rest of them had you know moved there from abroad and they were all making wine naturally. And I kind of, I keep thinking I, that place never left me. It just, it was just such a cool vibe, a cool community and the wines were really gorgeous. Um, not at that time, the cleanest, <laughs> but but they've all they've all evolved quite a bit since that trip, um, and I think about Monferrato sometimes as a similar place of this 
kind of hub where these young natural winemakers have started to accumulate because because they can because they can afford it and so it's there's a little bit of it not be, not the wine itself but just the kind of mentality and this concept of this community of natural winemakers that we have now um, that we're all friends and we're all working together um, to kind of promote Monferrato a little bit not too much but a little bit and all help one another it's really it's not about competition it's about you know a community of, of yeah. natural winemakers which is yeah. which is special and certainly not something that is easy to find in the lange merci Tada, rossore <laughs> yeah. uh, i made three different barbera the Umberta is the vineyard more young. Now it's not too young because the more young vineyard is 22 okay. years. And uh, Rossore I made for the middle age is around 45 years, the vineyard. But when the... I do, and, and Barabba is from the old vineyard, 80, 90 old age uh, age sì. cosa stai dicendo il barabba è fatto con vigna di 80 90 anni barabba is 80 or 90 year old yes vineyards. but when i don't make barabba the vineyard the barabba vineyard go in the rossore in the 17 you drink 17 you have 17 yeah mm -hmm. is uh, i don't make barabba the part of old vineyard is in the rossore and um, uh, cosa posso dire? I don't know. I've... Normally, I prefer the street vintage, not the 17 is hot vintage. Uh, but um, for me, for my personal testing, I prefer the 2002, 2014. I don't know, the, the, the vintage more street, when rain more is not too big. Uh, maybe the first the first time is a little strange but in the age is a surprise for this wine i think is is my opinion no my for my personal test but uh, uh, in reality uh, for me the wine is is beautiful wine obviously uh, and it, Io sono sempre sincero, digli che dico quello che penso, eh, anche se non so cosa devo fare, devo vendere o, o no. Eh? <laughs> Fabrizio, Fabrizio, it's very Piemontese, but um, he's not a salesperson, so he always says just what he thinks. So 17 is not basically what he's trying it's to say. It's not my favorite It's not our favorite vintage. vintage. <laughs> I prefer 18, I prefer 16, but not for the, the wine, I think is very good. But uh, for the style wine or the type of wine, uh, I prefer when there is more balance, is more not too hot, not too big. Um, yeah, Rossore. Oh, your, uh, your volumes, your... No, this is Barabba. He's holding the wrong one. <laughs> Scusa. <laughs> I was gonna say, so this is the 17 that you're saying is not your favorite vintage, correct? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I prefer okay. the vintage more street, not too hot, not too big. But okay. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Yeah. People, no, and I'm, people really I'm love very it. Very happy. I'm very, very We're happy. We're hard on our own children. <laughs> non so come dire. Io sono felicissimo di questo vino, però se devo bere un 17 un 18, scelgo sempre il 18. I guess with what that vintage brought and how difficult that vintage was, we're really, really happy with the wine. We really enjoy it. But yes, because the it's... difficulty is that right after 17 came 18, which was this super balanced, gorgeous vintage. And so you know, poor 17 is getting a, a, an even worse rap because 18 came right after it. But um, this is the this is the wine that's the most traditional yes. way to make Barbera yes. um, in, in Monferrato, which we know is where Barbera was born. So the, the birthplace of Barbera is Monferrato. And it was always around this age because this was kind of the height of its production and also of its it just goodness. It's when it starts getting that, that great complexity without becoming um the yield getting to a point where it wasn't it wasn't worth their while to keep the vineyards they would rip them up after about 35 40 years um and it was always aged in some sort of wood vessel but it used to be wood from the village or from the forest there was every village had its yeah. cooper so his grandfather had barrels that 
were made from the woods here, which is sadly, we don't have those anymore. Yeah. Um, but we were aging them in large oak. Anke, Anke, just, just for make a proof, a different proof in different wood for understand better the wood from here, but don't have more. This vintage, I think aging, I don't remember exactly, maybe 22 months in big oak. Uh, and I like it, I think it's full, it's very good. And, and, and for Lucky, the level acidity is good, it's for drink. So come dire. The first, the first time I met Fabrizio was the first time I had had a Barbera. I tasted a Barbera from Monferrato and that wasn't from Lange because that's what we got. We never got Barbera from Monferrato back in the days out on Long Island. And I joke, I fell in love with the wine and then him. I, when I could finally get my face out of the glass because I was just like, what the fuck is this? Because <laughs> the acidity, I couldn't get over the acidity and the complexity of this Barbera. And I'm like, this isn't Barbera. This can't be Barbera. And all the other Barbera I had, I just kind of, it, it felt like sort of like, bub, I kept calling it bubblegum Barbera. I don't know why that term comes to mind, but it was just kind of this fruity, easy, drinky Barbera. And this Barbera was like, you kind of had to have, excuse the expression, and it's not very feminist of me, but balls to drink it. I mean, it was just like whew, the acidity and the, you, you couldn't, at the time, I wasn't used to that level of acidity yet in, in the Barbera. And so I couldn't drink it without taking some cheese and salami. Um, now, of course, my palate's always looking for that acidity and any wine I drink now, I've gotten used to that, but it's not, um, it's not a, a, a Barbera for the masses for sure, but it's a Barbera, I think Barbera from Monferrato is a Barbera for serious wine drinkers. That's kind of my, my thing, especially because we have the super white soil and both of us are, you know, he too loves, is always looking for the acid. So Barbera is already one of the highest acidic grapes. And then we've got our really white soil. So it's just the perfect storm of, of yes. acid. But uh, in reality, uh, many, many, like, cause of capital, the, the, I think the life is a for case, for ev every life is for case. I make no, a school to... Every, but in uh, chance? No, è un caso, è, non sai, per caso, tutto, tutte le cose della vita capitano tante everything capitano is, per Everything caso. is sort of a coincidence in life. It yes. Nothing is, everything uh, happens. I, I make a school to design and construction joyellery, nothing for the wine or the enologist, never. And uh, when I young, my mother, she have a restaurant in this village, very good restaurant, and as a family restaurant, I work in the restaurant. For me, the level, the level acidity is very important because uh, is is the battle you drink is when it's not to sono sono seduti non so quando sono vini dinamici quando sono vini che hanno delle energie it's a term in Italian I'm sure you've all heard it by now but it's um, when you say Crispy a wine, wine when you I say like a this. wine is uh, in Italian you say seduto it's seated you guys heard that before it's a great term that you can use in Italian that we don't have an equivalent for in English. And it, it, I always want to use it. Um, but all, we say when a wine, you know, a wine when it's missing that kind of acidity and that, that energy that it's, that it's seated, it's tired. It's, um, I guess we say it's tired, but it's a little yeah. bit different. So he's saying if it doesn't have that right level of acidity, for him it's seduto, it's, it's sitting, it's tired. It's, it's like, it's, uh, it's, it's sitting down. Yeah, okay, I see, yeah. yeah. A me piacciono quando invece sono dinamici, freschi e eh, 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 for the Barbera, the, the beautiful character to Barbera, maybe the unique, very, very good character is the level acidity. And uh, it's important to uh, make a good grape because when the level acidity is high for, for make a balanced wine is important the grape is very good different you testing the acid wine oh it's difficult drink but i have to it's say it's it's body, good it's good right now the 17th gotten we're snobbing on the 17 and drinking the 18 all the time but the 17 is probably actually drinking better than the 18 right now because <laughs> it's even I, I, yeah i know i totally i get it i i just i had i totally hadn't thought about that and I know 17 was such a hot year. I was, I was over like in Italy in 2017. And then I went back in 2018, you know, and people were like, oh, these 2017s are so alcoholic and stuff, you know, I'm like, but th this is so impressive to me because it's, it, it does have that taste of coming from a hot year. 
and yeah. but and, and it does it tastes there's a character to it that tastes old in a way you know that tastes like uh but it, but it's not tired it's not sitting down yeah. it's it's balanced like that's to me after after having tasted lots of 2017s that had too much alcohol that were too hot that were too tired um yeah. this you you taste that it was a hot year, but it's balanced and it has the acidity and the minerality and and everything is working really well. It's it's a it's a mature, serious, deliberate kind of red wine um, that that's still got a lot of power. That still like has a lot of energy and staying power, and it's it's really cool to taste. And it's uh, it's you know no, had knowing the Umberta pretty well and and having the Baraba and being able to taste the three of them. So is the is the Rosore not always like this? Uh, like how much how much of that uh, that character comes from the time in oak? Does it, it? I'm assuming the Rosore always spends you know an extended period in large oak cask. Yeah. Il rosore più o meno è sempre per un anno e due, per tra un anno e due. È sempre intorno ai due anni. It's around two, it's around two years. Uh, when the vintage is more hot, uh, the wine in the cellar is is a uh, is a same the grape in the plant. When the vintage is hot, maturing more faster, and the wine in the cellar aging more faster non, non, non aging è pronto prima come si dice it's ready, ready more faster it's ready earlier it's just like you pick uh, early the wine's also getting hot normally it's 26 uh, 20, around this time in oak and I don't remember exactly 17 I think it's 22 maybe 20 22 months maybe 4 5 months before the normal time uh, but because the vintage hot is ready before uh, mm. Mm, poi, I know, I, for me the Barbera, when it's a little uh, in the time, is one aromatic part, it's many fruit, but one part aromatic is grafite, come si dice grafite? Um, graphite, right? Graphite, and is that what you say in English? The pencils, what's in a pencil? Yeah, uh, graphite, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sono dei profumi yeah. che mi ricordano leggermente la Côte du Rhône. Yeah. It's a little aromatic part. Remember me the for the Barbera when the, it's good Barbera. Remember the Côte du Rhône, the part of the South France. Uh, I'm feeling really guilty as a mother about how much I was speaking badly about this this wine of ours because it's really also impressing me right now. I think it's at a really gorgeous point in its life and it and it's it wants to be drank right now. I think it's going to keep going, but it's it's just really so beautifully integrated and just the the start to finish is super balanced it's just for drink <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll have to we'll have to open a few bottles of 17 and give her some attention at our next dinner party <laughs> uh one other i was also just curious so this this style of approximately two years in in barrel barbera like this is this a really traditional style in monferrato is this something, this is like something that your family, your family already did. And so you, you continued making wine this way, or was this something that you were like, you know what, Barbera is too bubble gummy. It's too easy and simple and fruity. I'm going to, I'm going to make some more complex Barberas. Normally in Montferrat is two style, two type of Barbera. Traditionally all make wine in concrete. But the part uh, more good, you know, the top of the hill, uh, the one part aging in oak. And uh, in Piedmont, before uh, 90, 80, don't, don't have a barrique, don't have a small hawk, just big oak, all is big oak. In the cellar, in my grandfather's cellar, is a big oak. And maybe one barrique, one for 500, because it depends. Uh, maybe one year, uh, don't control too much the production. The best vintage is when you have, you have many wines. And uh, 
dovevi averle sempre piene. It's different sides for the quantity of wine you made because it's, it's important, it's a top. Uh, is necessary the, the, the wood right. is there was top. always varying um, sizes of wood vessels obviously traditionally in everybody's yeah. cellar because depending on the yield that vintage you always had to have everything full to the top right so, you can't yeah you can't you can't put 500 liters in a 3,000 liter barrel that is yeah. that is not going to yeah. make wine that's going to make vinegar <laughs> yeah yeah you, know, you can't yeah. put 1500 liters in a thousand liter without right. having for the yes. overflow and then there's the topping off and so but anyway his too. grandfather had me too now i have the more big because it's the the seats entering the cellar passing the door is for 2500 liter and after is other is for 2100 but start to 2500 and come in 1000 liter it's more smaller is 1000 liter we, we make because... wine Let's back up one second. We make wine in the cellar of this Cascina, which um, so we can, we're, we can only get a certain size barrel in through the, the cellar doors, right? Because they used to make them in the cellar often if you wanted them bigger, but we don't have that luxury anymore because we don't have a cooper in the village. But just to note, the cellar, this house is um, almost 500, 500 years old. And the cement tanks that are built into the house um, are a total of ten, like almost 40,000 liters worth of Barbera they made here 500 years ago. Just to, and that, I mean, right there, that is just for me mind blowing to think that, you know, this village probably had 200 people. They didn't send it to America and Japan and Australia. You know, that was just for local consumption. Right, right, right. That's, that's <laughs> it's, incredible. Uh, a lot. Right, it's a lot to wrap your head around. We don't, we do sell, we do sell our wine to all of those places, and we only use two of those three tanks. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. It's it's a so, and that was so there was oh yeah there was always wood. But to answer your question, Barbera, the important vineyards were always in wood, and then there was obviously the cement, the the just kind of the wine that they drank at breakfast, lunch, and dinner a lot of apparently every day. Okay. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Cool. Tada, baraba. Speaking of tada, did you get to any tada, Ned? Uh, no, I did not get any tada. Next, next vintage. It's good wine. It's fun wine. Okay. Baraba, nineteen. Uh, for example, in seventeen, I don't make. Um, I don't make Barabba, fermenting, uh, separated, all this, eh? but in finally blended to Rosore. Uh, this is 19. I don't, I decide don't make Barabba in 17 because it's, uh, come si dice, avevo paura che non fosse serio, serio come volevo, come voglio che sia Barabba. He only makes Barabba. It's a it's a serious moment of deliberation between us two because we we usually agree, but we we didn't agree. For example, in eighteen, um, the wine has to really be serious and has to convince him that it's absolutely Barabba, or else he won't put the put the label on it. Um, because Barabba was born from the vineyard that his grandfather planted that he inherited uh, when his grandfather passed, which is what set him off to become a winemaker with this label as opposed to just a village winemaker like his father and grandfather and great grandfather were before him, you know, to put put a, his own label on it and make it his sort of own thing. Um, so it's got a, obviously a very important spot si. in his heart. Non lo so, in the confronto, come si dice in paragone? In... Comparison? Comparison to Rossore is more, now is more close, is more young, but I like is more deep, is not too, Rossore, I think all the person drink the Rosore, she's happy because uh, it's a wine. It's easy for drink at the same time. Rosore is a little is more young, but it's a little more close, but it's more deep. And I like this. Uh, it's a very serious, no? Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, this is, in my mind, is this. Uh, so these vines are 80. Sono 60, 80, anche 100? So. No, sono 80, non so esattamente, tra 80 e 90. 
80, 90 year old vines. So it's a single vineyard um, that actually is not the vineyard that his grandfather planted. That last vintage was 2016. Um, but he's since rented, he's found another vineyard that um, was planted at the same time that are, were friends of his father, not his grandfather, because that, that generation has passed away, but friends of his father. And they knew his grandfather as well. So we rent this one single old vineyard from this very old couple, which is very sweet. It's yes. like a garden. They've kept it perfectly. And Fabrizio, they can't take care of it anymore. So Fabrizio has taken it over. And that's where we... And, we make Baraba from And that. this is another uh, aspect and difference between Monferrato and Alba. It's many more the personal relation, I don't know. And in and, and this area, you have many uh, old good vineyards for the old person, just because maybe 18 year old is a vineyard for 16 years, small, just for him or the family or, and, and when he's too old, uh, I run the vineyard because, uh, and it's, I don't know, it's more easy. It's many more easy, it's they're more not, free, it's more, the it's more normal. Aren't, the vineyards aren't normal. worth enough here for them to sell it. They may as well just keep it because it, it's got more value and sentiment for most of these the older generation than it does econ economically in, in dollars and cents. So rather than in Lange where you, know, you can retire on the sale of a vineyard, um, here they'll just keep it and keep making wine. So if you drive around here, you'll, you know, you see old vineyards all over the place. It's, it's it's really for wine geeks like us. It's incredible. I mean, you just the opportunities are everywhere. And so this is aged in questo è in un questo è una botte. 19, sì, una botte is just one, one tank, uh, one 1,500 barrel. liter, and um, fermenting in concrete and aging in wood. 19, fammi pensare, 19 ha fatto anche lui, mi pare, 22 mesi, una roba del genere. Around 22 months, 20, around this age. And, uh, uh, and finally battling. Now, I think it's good. It's mm. not ready for drink. It's good, but it's not really? ready. But the more beautiful part for the person who make wine, uh, Immaginarsi il vino, is, uh, come, come si può dire? E immaginarsi il percorso del vino. Prima. The most beautiful, the most beautiful thing for a winemaker is imagining the life course that your wine is going to take, the, the the journey it's going to, the evolution in its journey. Yeah. Uh, sono contento. I'm very happy because for me it's good. This is è un vino. È un vino, no? È austero. It's a wine. It's a serious wine. Not, not send me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Something Fabrizio said to me when, when we first met that I also never really thought about, which never left me, was that um, he said a winemaker in his lifetime gets, if he's lucky, 40, 45 chances to make the wine exactly like he wants. And I... You know, an artist can paint a picture every day if she or he wants to. A winemaker gets one one shot a year at at getting that that wine how they envision it based on how the vintage went in the vineyard. And so, at the end of their career, it, it, that's actually not that many chances to kind of you know perfect or you know live out that that dream. So it's just it's something you maybe you don't think about. Um, if you're not the one actually making the wine, that every year that passes, you're, there's there was another one of your chances to to get it how you have it, maybe exactly in your head or maybe not. Or it's interesting from that point of view. I thought. Bisogna avere un po' di fortuna. Uh, it's necessary a little part of lucky. You have to be lucky. Yeah. Yeah, lucky for the. Because don't maybe the nail, maybe the good ma ma course of the vineyards, and we get a lot of hail here too. So the reason that Monferrato, the other reason when Monferrato was abandoned, and unfortunately in the '60s you saw Lange go like this, and Monferrato just kind of became forgotten, was because of the the hail. There was three vintages or five, tre annate, cinque annate consecutive, five consecutive vintages of yeah. hail. More horrible is '58. 
and the people in this time the the farmer family is uh, many kids and no money and after five consecutive years ale stop work in the in the village go to torino for work in the fiat car because uh, they come on every month for for leave the family this yeah. is the reason and now it's all forest and and for lucky for, for lucky for me but <laughs> in this time is very hard uh, so we've a lot of the, all the our entire hillsides here in the valley and i hope all of you will come to visit um we're uh, all covered this, it is for under it's beautiful we're all it's covered beautiful. in vines and slowly um we're putting back vineyards where they were so when i moved here oh god i don't know there was a, a third of the vineyards now, but we're not putting vineyards in places where they weren't her, weren't historically. Um, we're putting them back where they were. So we're giving the original landscape back to this valley slowly but surely, which is kind of special as well. And no more, you know, just what there was and then leaving all of the forest all around. Kada, se avete domande, chiedete tu, you make a question, eh, because I don't know. I like uh, drink. Maybe I missed it, but how how long did the Baraba spend in the in the Bati? This vintage, I think, twenty two months. This is twenty I... months. Okay. Wow. Yes. So every yeah. yeah every vintage of Baraba. When did the two thousand four that he left more? See, uh, depends. Uh, depends the vintage. The in nineteen. Uh, vabbè, uh, partiamo dalla storia. I, I start uh, in Baraba, the, the vintage aging for more short time in oak uh, is uh, may aging uh, stato forse 20 mesi, around 20 months. The, the vintage aging for more time in oak is 2004, aged 31 months in oak. Is a big difference, mm -hmm. but depends. Um, depend the vintage. Uh, Eo four is very good vintage. Uh, I sent a Ned. I sent a really long wordy email on Baraba last week. I don't know if you got that. Okay. And the story it was it was like a mailchimp, but um, it's a story that I wrote on Fabrizio and Baraba and the family with lots of fun pictures. So you can pull the pictures and bits and pieces out of that if you'd like to, it's it's long, but it's got a lot of information on it. I'll send that out to the people on this this list, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Wow, cool. It's all wine for food, because the best moment for drink wine, when the wine is good, is good in the morning and before sleep. But uh, <laughs> the best moment for drink wine is with food. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to the, the Barbera is, a, is more bigger, the other wine, but is the acidity, the, is a high acidity, is good level acidity, is, is wine for food, clean the mount. You eat and drink and the mount is clean, is a good game. Eat uh, wait, actually, okay, I have a question. Uh, yeah. We don't have the Umberta here, but between the Umberta, the Rosore and the Baraba, so particularly because the Rosore and the Baraba have similar amounts of aging in wood for them. And I mean, we're drinking 2017 Rosore, which was a hot vintage and 2019 Baraba. So it's, it's significantly younger and that's part of why it's brighter and fresher and stuff. But, but the Umberta is very, is really rich and, and ripe and powerful. Yeah. Where, where does that why why are they so different where does that come from is that is is how much of that is winemaking or it, or is that just that the vineyard sites are very different is it different exposure what, why are they so such different wines his whole the three barberas were all about vineyard age yes, so what they, he really wanted to show you've got the same grape the same set of hands the same terroir slightly different aging because Umberta is just steel and cement but yeah. the whole the aging, whole no, study no wood in Umberta is just for fruit and the perception is more bigger because the especially the big oak because the when you're testing the wine aging in, in 
in Bigog on or in Barik, the for me the the the, suge the impression is the the Barik is more round and the uh, and the Bigog is more right uh, and. Uh, se tu paragoni dicendo che l'Umberto sembra tanto più grosso più fino perché le vigne sono più giovani e sono, sono più giovani sono più giocate sul frutto e sulla pulizia del frutto non sul il legno gli dà un po' più di evoluzione in verticale so um, the the Umberto because they're really young productive vigorous vines and vineyards there 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 are newest vineyards to maybe 15 year old vineyards 20 year old vineyards and then from there they all go into Rosori and then the 80 to 100 into Barabba. So those you get three different, you know, completely different age ranges and Umberta seems so big and juicy he's saying because you don't have the wood to kind of have it stand up. It's just it's a, a the cement and the steel allows that wine to just be a lot richer and more just about the fruit. Right, there's no prendono un pochino di tannino no, dal legno, they take a little bit of tannin from the wood, the microoxygenation, yeah. the different things. Whereas Umberto is just like a, a power punch of, of uh, yeah, a fruit of Barbera, yeah. <laughs> and we're frozen. Cosa è successo? Siamo già di fatto. Funny that the only person I can see that's not frozen is you, Kelly. I can see you moving around in your rat. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is frozen. I just haven't moved at all. Oh, there we but, go. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> Sorry, I have. That's all right. Oh. It's good that we didn't lose, that this didn't happen during everything, as right. towards the end. <laughs> yeah, just at the, at the very end. Yeah. That's perfect. This was, and thank you, Ned. You're welcome. This is really You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, looks oh, like good. <laughs> Eccoci qua, evviva. I have my Wi Fi and a timer, so it goes off when the, at nighttime when we're sleeping, and I think it's starting to. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, cool. That was that was good. That was that was a very good, clear, yeah, explanation of why those three wines are so different. I just to me, it, you know, it it's like it's like you have three sons and they grow up and they do all the same things, and then one of them decides to become a professional race car driver, and another one wants to be an accountant, and the next one wants to become a professional actor, and you're like, oh, okay, where did that all come from? Yeah. But, but yeah, but they're very, they're <laughs> such different versions of Barbera. I, I, I do, I love that. And I appreciate how unique each of them is. Um, it looks like we've frozen again. Ugh. I'm going to wait for, we'll see if Summer and Fabrizio come back. Okay, and we're back. Okay. Oops. There I'm so sorry. So sorry. Okay. Yeah. I think we're cool. good. Well, yeah. Before before you freeze again, thank you so much for doing this. That was no, thank you. Fantastic. Um, it's, it's a big pleasure. And uh, it's more pleasure when you come here and there's a many wine in the cellar for testing. Yeah, lots to drink here. So <laughs> it's best it's best you come over this Easier. No, but in all seriousness, we have um we have lots, lots of extra be yeah. bedrooms, and we'd love any anytime welcome. anybody is in the area, please do come, and we have a place for you to lay your head. Okay. And, cool. and lots to drink. I will. I'll come see you eventually, definitely. Uh, please. Yeah. And I recommend with the rest of that bar baraba there, Ned, is a big hunk of blue cheese or gorgonzola. It's really. Okay. All it's, right. It's it's what it wants. Okay. Great. Cool. <laughs> All right. Finish your day with the gorgonzola and baraba. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for for making foods that uh, wines that go with food because I feel like that's my my eternal commitment to educating Americans is the beautiful culture that Italians bring to the the, the, the sort of wedding of those two things that they're they're inextricably linked. So I, I thank you for that. Oh, I think thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, when you come visit, you'll see that. There's no lack of eating here either, so. <laughs> there shouldn't be. Yeah.
Well, thank you guys. And um, we're, we love to hear from everybody. So questions and visits, whenever. Cool. All right. Thanks so a lot. Up, Ciao. Grazie. Bye, Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Buona, Buona serata. Buona serata. Buona serata.